You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Let's start with uh, just kind of a, play a little catch up here, Shay. So I know there was some uh, conversation about how, you know, the first 48 hours or so Brian Kelly hadn't reached out to recruits. I was told there was some kind of like uh, buffer period where he had to wait that long. Can you c clarify what those first, say, 48 hours were like after after Brian Kelly got hired, as best you know? Yeah, well, you they have to get through that initial window of being cleared and everything. And I think a lot of it was just the whirlwind tour of, getting here Tuesday night, all day Wednesday, going through press conferences and meet and greets and speaking with former players. And uh, I know they had an athletic function that night, but uh, I know by Thursday he was on the phone with folks and through the weekend. And uh, I know the recruiting staff, uh, everybody that's in place right now, you know, not including, I mean, including on-field coaches, obviously, but a lot of the off-field staff have been working with Kelly on that. And he's talked to Gosh, I, I would guess nearly all of the commits by now. I know we've talked to a number of uncommitted guys around Louisiana that he's talked to. So kind of what he said when he was at his introductory press conference and what Brad Davis said this weekend was the goal for the early signing period and the goal for this final weekend before the early signing period of visits is to take care of your base, which would mean your commitments and your kids here in Louisiana that plan to sign next week. Uh, we talked last hour, Shay, with Emory Jones. He said he's pretty firm to LSU, but kind of keeping his options open. As best you know, how solid are, better way to ask it, are there any prospects in this class that you might worry, okay, if they, if something falls left instead of right, maybe that guy could could be a, a you know in jeopardy? You know, there's the concern, I guess, with a lot of guys. You look out of state probably first, and Jake Johnson is Max Johnson's brother. You know, I'm sure that Jake is keeping an eye on who the OC is, who the tight ends coach is. Um, Mason Taylor in Florida is a tight end they've got committed. Uh, they've got Demario Tolan, a Florida linebacker, is real close with Blake Baker. Obviously, he'll kind of be wondering who the linebacker's coach or D.C. will be, if it's going to be Baker or somebody else. Uh, and you could kind of go down the list of guys mm -hmm. just out of state. Then you get in state. You know, LaTerrence Welsh at Acadian as a cornerback. Well, he's visited around Arkansas, Auburn, but he's still been in the class. And he said, hey, look, I've, I love LSU. I'm committed to LSU, but I really have wanted to play for Corey Raymond. Is he going to be there? Is he not going to be there? So we're still having some of that uncertainty right now. But I think that the next week leading up to this signing day will uh, shed a lot of light or at least bring some clarity to kind of what the next step is for a lot of these guys. Because, look, Matt, if they're signing next Wednesday, if they're ready to sign, their decision's made. I mean, there's a handful of them that are going to sign next week that aren't early enrollees. They're just ready to get things done with. So I think the goal for them is to get all these guys, and they've got a double-digit visitor list already worked up for this weekend, which will be Brian Kelly's first chance to, to host kids and their families you know, in the LSU Polo and on the LSU campus. And uh, the goal with that is to get all of these kids in, notably the guys in Louisiana and the guys for sure who are trying to sign next week and enroll early perhaps. Uh, and make sure they feel good about the decision. So I think this weekend, when you've got Emory Jones and you've got Will Campbell, Walker Howard, and and down the list, like I said, double-digit guys that are going to be in, uh, you'll see by the time they leave on Sunday, I think they'll have a better grip of where they stand. It's just a, a great time to to join up at Go247, uh, as everything is within two weeks now of, uh, of the early signing period. So Chit, let me also, um, home base, right? Okay, that's kind of what you allude to. Let's talk about some of these in-state prospects that are uncommitted and how things are moving. We saw prospects last week get in-homes from coaches, you know, Quincy Wiggins among them. What can you tell us about where this stands with uh, the big defensive lineman from Madison Prep? Yeah, he's a good kind of spot to start at, and he had been recruited by a number of schools. I mean, look, Bama, Florida, uh, a lot of SEC offers have been out there, uh, but he's kind of buckled in and said, I want to still visit LSU that last weekend before the signing period gets here and he still wants to sign next week. So it certainly bodes well that he's going to be on campus this weekend. And I know he's gotten close to Andre Carter, but this will be his first chance to, to meet Brian Kelly and talk to him. So that's a, a guy that a lot of us are kind of watching. Um, Jacoby Matthews is another at Ponchatoula. Now he's not going to sign till February. So he plays for a state title on Saturday night. So he's kind of focused on the high school end of things before January. Maybe he picks up there. Um, but Quint, uh, another guy, Kendrick Law from up in Shreveport, uh, Captain Shreve is uh, expected to be in this weekend. He's been on FSU. He's been Bama. 
uh, he's got options, but I think that he's going to give LSU a good look here before uh, next week arrives. So we're sitting on that theme of this weekend means a lot for the current committed guys. It means a lot for guys who are coming in that are uncommitted. And I think you've also just seen at times other guys have kind of not maybe trended away, but you would just not start to guess that it's going to go LSU's way. For instance, if Shaz Preston's signing next Wednesday, well, He's yet to make that official visit to LSU. He's a wide receiver out of St. James. Mickey Joseph was his lead recruiter. Mickey Joseph is now at Nebraska. And like I said, if he does sign next week, his final visit this weekend is going to Alabama. So they've sort of been viewed as a team that was trending, and you'd have to think that that would lead towards maybe him signing there if he, if he does do something next week. So I think a lot of these guys that aren't early enrollees are sit, sort of sitting on the fence of, do I go ahead and get things done? And put a you know a ribbon on my recruitment next week or do I wait things out uh, and again as we get through this weekend I think guys will feel like okay I've made enough visits to know where I'm going or hey I kind of want to wait things out because look LSU is not the only school going through uh, coaching shuffle at, at a lot of these big programs and uh, guys sort of have a lot of that on their minds right now. Uh, Shay Dixon's with us he's on Twitter at Shay Dixon you did mention Mickey Joseph and, and this is a specific question then I guess a broader question as well any prospects specifically associated with Mickey Joseph that become a little bit of a concern now because he's gone? And then just generally speaking, maybe thought on staff changes and how that might affect this class. Uh, well, I think with Joseph, you look at, you know, New Orleans receivers are probably where you jump first. And Aaron Anderson was a guy committed to LSU had flipped to Alabama. And then Preston was a guy he was hard on. So he had been involved, given he was the recruiting coordinator with a lot of guys, and Jacoby Matthews and Ponchatoula he was recruiting and down the line, but I'm not sure it'll ultimately kill LSU's chances. Now, it will be interesting to see, Matt, the timeline of – we know Brad Davis is going to be on staff from right now until at least January 5th. He's the interim coach, and he's coaching in the bowl game. But uh, when I asked him on Sunday about was the expectation that the rest of the staff would be with him through then, and then they'd make changes after the bowl – uh, he said, obviously, look, I'll paraphrase, but that would be a Kelly question. And he's got a plan in place that if someone takes a new job or isn't on staff anymore, uh, that during bowl prep, they would move an analyst up to that role. Uh, now, what does that mean for recruiting if, you know, you enter, you know, whatever, blank position and that coach suddenly isn't on staff anymore, takes a new job somewhere else? Uh, how, how does that shuffle things up? I think it could, uh, but – We've seen these kids hold on all this way through a midseason firing to uh, getting all the way to Brian Kelly after uh, the season ended and getting through this championship weekend. And uh, still, there's been only a couple of decommitments. So uh, I think even with everything still a bit in flux of not knowing who your position coach is and everything else, the guys that are ready to get things done next week, uh, you know, are kind of going to say, look, I'll come in this weekend, for instance, to LSU if you're Quincy Wiggins. Come in this weekend, see the program, and at the end of the day, I'm a Baton Rouge guy. If I'm signing with LSU, I have to do it understanding the nature of the business of coaching changes. And and I'm sure Kelly will sell them on the program moving forward and uh, sort of say, hey, look, the dominoes will fall when they fall uh, in terms of who the coordinators and position coaches are. That can't prevent them from continuing to just try to sell these guys on signing with LSU. And, and that's kind of the goal. I think they'll come away with you know, 13, 14 uh, signees next week, and then you move into the back half of the period and that's when Kelly's really able to get a look at the roster. You know, you get to see after the bowl game who's still here, who's leaving. You get a feel for who you left the early signing period with, and then you can kind of make your priorities down the stretch for February's signing day. And I've said it before on your show, Matt, with all these coaching changes going on at LSU, February signing day is oft forgotten nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, not for LSU this year. It'll be probably just as important as the first one, as will the, tra uh, the transfer portal. So a lot still to come. I think next week is – probably where you just handle your base. You make sure you get as many of these committed guys signed. You try to pop some of these guys who want to sign early in Louisiana, and then you reshuffle the deck from there. And, and I think that's about as good as you can ask for with the kind of the situation you're in. Makes a lot of sense. A couple more minutes here with Shea Dixon. Uh, also saw that Austin Osbury, the, the four-star defensive back out of U High here in Baton Rouge, uh, said his commitment date for uh, the 13th. Um, LSU is one of his six finalists. What can you tell us? It looks like he will be coming in for a visit this weekend. That was at least the word this morning. Um, I didn't get that confirmed from Austin, but uh, I'll reach out to him this week. And uh, as the week goes on and coaches come in home and all that and see if that sticks. But I would say that's good news. And look, this Austin's a guy who worked out at camp and plays at U High, obviously, here on campus. But 
they worked him at corner, worked him at safety. Safety's a real need right now, uh, and they have two corners committed, but none signed. So they're going to keep pressing. I think that it bodes well that Austin, who has sort of a who's who offer list of anyone around the country, made visits all year. Uh, but here, that final weekend before signing day is going to give LSU that that last look, and I think that will at least give Kelly and them a chance to to kind of sell him on. Being a fit here, Corey Raymond will obviously be there this weekend, or at least the expectation is these coaches will be there this weekend, and we see where it goes from there. But I think it but it certainly bodes well that his final visit right before he's signing uh, goes to the hometown team. Jay, any um, any word on timeline for for staff changes? I mean, not that I know. I mean, I'm I'm as in the dark as what Kelly's up to now as I was when Woodward was searching for Kelly. So. Right. It's uh, it's sort of happening quietly. Everyone's putting out their best guesses, but you get everything from is that person in the NFL to is that person in a bowl game or the playoffs. And, um, you know, I know we're seeing kind of rumors of some coordinators out there being hired and, and then you'll see them stay with their team through the bowl and then pick up after. So I would understand that, right? Like maybe a kid would know who the coordinator is or whatever, just hadn't gotten a chance to meet him because he's still with the other team, but it at least gives you a chance to do some research or maybe you already knew that coach from the recruiting process, um, you know, you'd be surprised at how many times they, they cross over. So I don't know a timeline, but certainly I, I know this. I think that from asking around Kelly's approach is that these hires are more important than scrambling to hire a guy just so that you can fill out a class next week. Next week's just the first early period. They've got a whole other February signing period to go. The transfer portal is important more important maybe than ever, and certainly in a time of, of coaching shuffle like LSU is going through. So I would err on the side of caution if I were rushing in and saying, let's fill out our staff. And so it's no surprise to me that Kelly's presumably taking his time or vetting whoever's out there and, and making sure he gets it right uh, instead of just getting guys in here because you've only got one more weekend left, because you've got a lot of guys that need to sign next week. I think they understand that putting the staff together is probably more paramount than just one guy out there. Recruiting uh, season is heating up. Uh, Shea Dixon at Go247. I know it's a busy time, man. Thanks always for making a few minutes for us. Absolutely. It doesn't feel as overwhelmingly busy as it normally does because, like I said, in a normal year next week, LSU's signing like 22 of their 25 guys. So right. at least this one's, uh, you know, I'll keep an eye on the commit list and a couple of other guys, but I have a feeling I'm in for a lot of restless nights come January. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm sure we'll be bothering you many of those restless nights as well. But we always appreciate well, it, Dave. Yeah, I won't be restless yet. It'll be in the middle of the day, so I'll be fine. Uh, that, well, that's a great point. That's a, you, you'll be well rested by then in the middle of the day. Take, your, take yourself a nap. All right, Shay, we appreciate right. it, man. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.